The Story of Art by Sir Ernst Gombrich is now in its 16th edition. It is unrivaled as an introduction to the subject of art from the earliest cave paintings to the experimental art of today. First published in 1950, it is the world's best-selling book on art, and it has been translated into 24 languages. Gombrich, who served much of his career at the Warburg, Warburg Institute in London, has written more than 20 books and won numerous awards, including the Goethe Prize for Achievement in Art and Culture. And he is widely regarded as one of the greatest art historians of the second half of this century, and we are therefore very pleased to have him here. Welcome. Thank you very much. This is an extraordinary book, as you well know, and as people have praised. How did it come into being? More or less by accident, there's so many things in life. Yeah. It came into being because I had once had the commission to write a history of the world for children. When I was still in Vienna as a young man, I wrote this, which happened to be a great success, and I was asked now to write a history of art for children. My reply was that the history of art isn't for children. But when they went on pressing me, I said I could write it, but not for children. And that is how this book roughly came into being, that I decided to make this attempt. And after a number of interruptions due to the war and other reasons, I even tried to finish it. Why do you think it's met with such acceptance? I think or I hope it is because I don't try to give myself airs. I don't try to make a mystery of things which are not a mystery, but I admit that there are mysteries which one needn't discuss because they are too obviously mysteries. You also have said before, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, because the fact that it's said does not necessarily mean you said it, that the story of art makes a difference, that it is the story of art. That is entirely true. I'm glad that you mentioned this. The story in the sense that it is not just a chronicle of one thing after another. There's a chronicle of fashion, for instance. But the development of image making is a story in so far as there is a story also behind the development of flying or other mm -hmm achievements of mankind in so far as uh, people strove for certain aims and passed on their achievements to others and so there's a coherence in the story which one can tell as a chain of events which hangs together. Yeah, that seems to be what everybody seems to like so much about it. It is, in fact, the, what you have brought to bear is the connection and the unfolding story. That's of what art I try to do, yes. What about modern art? Modern art is an interesting point in this respect because my story, in a certain sense, is a story of the conflict between two opposing problems or methods of representing the world, which, in a simplified form, you can say you draw what you know or you draw what you actually see. And I explained that the Egyptians drew in that sense what they knew rather than what they saw in front of them. And that this development went as far as Impressionism, uh, where the principle of what was called the innocent eye, really looking at what you actually see, triumphed. This happened in the, at the end of the 19th century, and the problem of the coming of what was to happen afterwards is, mm. represents really the story of our century. So when you ask what about modern art, modern art is confronted with a certain break in that chain and the search for very different solutions. I tried to explain in the book that one of the reasons for this break was that in a sense the theory which was underlying Impressionism is a little too simple. We can never completely separate what we know from what we see and therefore uh, the whole idea broke down and I should have added and I did add in a later page that photography has a lot to do with this too. 
to the search for alternative what an artist an image maker mm -hmm. can do was on and it still goes on all the time you have never been a great collector I've never been a, a great or a minor collector. Or a minor collector. Yes. Why is that? First of all, I had never had a lot of money. Yeah, well, that's, that's a start. <laughs> I, but I know good collectors who didn't start with a lot of money. That is true. I have no possessive instincts. I'm very happy when I see a great painting in a great gallery or museum, and I don't feel, oh, I wish I would own that. I'm very happy that it's there where it is. To enjoy it in the museum. Exactly. You, or the gallery. But you do have prints. I, my father was a print collector, and I own a number of pleasant prints and even quite valuable prints. Yeah. Yes.